And that's the magic of Cardano. It's um, the most decentralized cryptocurrency in the world uh, and will remain so. And we're demonstrating to the entire cryptocurrency space, real time, how to build a decentralized government. There is so much happening behind the scenes for Cardano that I'm probably going to have to make another video after this one to cover them all. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and ping your notification bells. For this video, though, I'll be focusing on the new Cardano governance structure and how it's going to revolutionize our space. A potential uh, partnership with Argentina and Javier Malay. A lot of talk about that. We'll get into that as well. And a product that many Cardano fans, including myself, have seemingly been asking for and wanting from Charles Hoskinson, and he has all but pretty much confirmed it in this same video that I showed you. We'll get back to that towards the end of the video. Now, before I get into the Argentina potential, I know a lot of you have been discussing on forums, on chats, on X and Twitter. I need you to understand the importance of the upcoming changes to the governance model on Cardano. So I point you back to the video I just showed you a clip of, and this is where Charles is talking about the Chang hard fork and kind of what it's going to entail with uh, relation to Voltaire. It has a whole bunch of stuff inside of it, Plutus V3, but most importantly, SIP 1694, which is the governance framework for Cardano. And it's a blending of three concepts together. So there's democratic representation, so democratic consent. So these are the D reps, the constitutional committee. So that's the on-chain government, as well as the stake pool operators. There's institutions, and institutions are... Uh, things like the members-based organization, uh, Intersect, uh, the Cardano Foundation, et cetera, et cetera, that are basically buying for the uh, the people. Uh, and then you have, finally, uh, the uh, uh, constitutional representation. And so that preserves the integrity of the system. So uh, in the beginning, there's... A so a lot of stuff to unpack there, right? This is something Cardano has been working on, something that everyone's pretty much excited about, something that no one's really doing. But how is it going to affect Cardano, the community? And I know a lot of you are saying, hey, how is that going to help the price, right? Price of Cardano is sitting at 45, 46 cents. At the time of recording, we're watching other altcoins skyrocket in price. Cardano hasn't really done that. So what is this going to help it with? You might be asking the question. Well, think about this. Collaboration. People banding together, right? People want to serve a purpose. Think about the game Sims, right? Sims, this was years ago. Why did people download a game? Why was it the most popular game? Because you can create a whole separate world. You're part of a community. Think about all the communities on X, all the sub-communities on Reddit. People like having something that they can call their own. And if I can buy some ADA tokens, be part of the governance, and vote, or be a delegate, or apply for the constitutional committee, it gives more reason for people to come into the ecosystem. And once those keys get handed over to the community, there's really nothing else that the Cardano Foundation and Charles Hoskinson uh, are going to have control of as far as what gets approved, what doesn't get approved, especially when it comes to Treasury. And we'll get into the Treasury a little bit later. Now, I want to share with you another clip of this video where uh, Charles talks about the, the two parts of the Chang hard fork and the most important part being the second part of it, which we'll talk about the importance of that here in a second. But listen to him here again. So Chang has two hard forks, should the stake pool operators approve it. One is to implement Plutus V3 and all of the SIP 1694 logic with the DREPs turned off as a governing body, but registration turned on. Then the goal is to spend about 90 days letting people register to become DREPs, getting delegation preferences and other things in place, uh, just so people can get used to the system so it's a fair distribution. Then turn on as an additional hard fork using the constitutional committee the D reps. And at that point, you have a fully functioning government. You have the D reps, you have an interim constitution, and you have the constitutional committee and stake pool operators. So once you have all three, so the second part of the hard fork, now you're going to unlock that $1 billion in treasury that a lot of people are talking about. Now, how are you going to access this? You get to put in, uh, you get to put in improvement proposals or budget proposals. It gets voted on just like a government works, right? Just like your government works, whatever country you're working for. Well, Majority here, let's talk about the U.S. The way the U.S. government works, you pitch a bill in the Senate, they talk about it, they write it up, they go to vote in the House, and they go to vote in the Senate, and the president signs off. Same idea. So if, if you guys, you're watching, like, we need a stable coin on Cardano, guess what? Once this all is all in place, you can submit a proposal, a budget proposal, it can get voted on, looked upon. Once it gets passed, the money is there, funded, bam, stable coin on Cardano. Whether it's you want to ramp up marketing, launching a new dApp, whatever the case may be, now the uh, the community, the ADA holders, the delegates are going to have that power to be able to push Cardano forward. 
uh, and bring things into the ecosystem that they think is necessary for Cardano to continue to grow. So that's going to happen in the second part of the Chang hard fork. And Charles, of course, talked about the 90 day cool off period. Uh, and so it's only a matter of time. Exciting things are coming. Now, the last part of this video I want to show you uh, is a short clip uh, with Charles talking about the first to combine constitutional government with a liquid democracy just extremely impressive with what this team and what Charles's vision is for Cardano. Listen to this. The first system in the world to take a principles of a constitutional republic and then combine them with a liquid democracy system. No one's ever done that. And no one's ever done that with a blockchain. And no one's ever done that with a blockchain with millions of people around the world who've never met each other. Yet we're doing it in real time uh, and we're doing it with grace and dignity. So I'm very proud of everybody who's participating. So this is going to be a fun election. You know, it uh, it serves a very specific purpose. It strengthens the governance muscle a little bit, um, and it gets a lot of new and fresh blood into the conversation, uh, and uh, there's a lot to do. Now, many institutions also have to offer support. There's been open questions, for example, of constitutional committee members eventually getting budgets and staff to assist them in their role uh, as constitutional committee members. So this is going to be something that's open for debate in the first constitu in the first Cardano budget uh, that comes out as SIP 1694 turns on. And as a special interest group, the governance class of Cardano, both DREPs and constitutional committee members do need some help because the volume of governance work is quite considerable. Uh, just like congressmen and senators have staff, it does make sense for us to allocate some budget to each constitutional committee member to do so. So that's very unique in itself, of course, what they're doing in the liquid democracy. But ima imagine this, right? You're a constitutional committee member. You have a budget now. You can go out and hire an assistant. New opportunities for people to be part of the ecosystem and make money. Uh, it's nothing but positive here, which leads me to the big topic that everyone's been talking about uh, that is truly unique is this potential partnership with Argentina, right? We know El Salvador and Nayib Bukele, they chose Bitcoin. Can we see a, com a country like Argentina choose Cardano? It makes sense since Malay is a for the people president. And we know that Charles is a for the people crypto founder uh, as he does everything different than what some of these other projects do. These VC backed projects that that run up in price a lot. And then so no one in their right mind is going to take the time, put in this kind of government's framework, uh, which immediately doesn't bring any value to yourself or the ecosystem as a whole. But Charles's vision is a lot grander. Now, this headline I want to share from CoinGape. Uh, Cardano's Charles Hoskinson draws interest from Argentina president amid crypto talks. Uh, Charles Hoskinson recently caught the attention of Argentina president Javier Malay with a social media interaction. This engagement underscored Cardano's increasing interest in expanding to Argentina. Moreover, this comes on the heels of Argentina mulling on blockchain technology and crypto, particularly in the context of recent regulatory moves. Now, what are some of the things that Argentina can do with Cardano? Let's start with financial inclusion, right? We talk about digital identity. This is something that Cardano was working on currently. They've been talking about, uh, as far as three, four years ago, doing this in Africa. Could they bring this to Argentina, right? Uh, Argentina can use Cardano to provide secure, verifiable digital identities for the unbanked, enabling them to access these financial services. We also talk about DeFi, developing DeFi platforms peer-to-peer. Second one is like our agriculture, right? We know Charles is big on agriculture. He's got a, a ranch with, I think, like 600 bison. I talk about supply chain transparency, right? Implement blockchain solutions to track and verify the provenance and quality of agricultural products. Um, you talk about smart contracts for trade, right? This might be important for things like farmers to make sure they get paid in time, right? The third one is like government services, right? This makes the most sense. We know Javier came in, President Malay sliced the budget staff, fired a bunch of um, federal employees, and they finally got a budget surplus. Well, could Cardano help move that along further? Talk about voting systems, right? Developing secure, transparent, and tamper-proof voting. Uh, public records management, that should be a big one as well. Uh, speaking of records, healthcare, at least here in the U.S., medical records are a big industry that a lot of people pay a lot of money for, and, and people are just like, hey, I don't want anyone having my information. I want my own medical records and I want access. I want to be able to be the one to decide who has access to my medical records. You can do that by bringing it on chain. Could that, could that be something Argentina does with Cardano? Talk about education, right? Credential verification, implementing blockchain solutions for verifying educational credentials and certifications, uh, funding for scholarships, right? Using smart contracts to manage and distribute money, 
economic development, right? Tokenizing assets, something they talk about a lot here in the U.S. with BlackRock. Can Argentina be the next up-and-coming South American economy? I mean, it's still one of the largest in the world, uh, one of the and the second largest, I believe, in South America. Can Cardano help move that forward? These are all things that are on the table potentially for a Cardano and Argentina partnership. Will we see it in the future? Who knows? Will the chosen crypto chain, the chosen blockchain for Argentina, be Cardano? That remains to be seen. And the final thing I teased you in the beginning was something we've all been asking for, right? We talk about artificial intelligence and how we're so worried about a few handful of companies. Companies, let's just face it, we don't really trust them, right? Building and creating and feeding information to these AI large language models that are going to grow and learn from that base foundation of knowledge. And a lot of people say it's going to, they're going to take over the world. Terminator side, right? So this is Cardano in that same video talking about, are we going to get an LLM on Cardano built by Cardano? Listen to this. It does also need to be some integration of AI into our ecosystem. And we, we probably need our own large language model based on something open source and fine-tuned for the needs of Cardano to assist the lawmakers of Cardano, the D-Reps and the Constitutional Committee. So these are things that will be discussed at Intersect and outside of Intersect. And of course, we'll try to find ways to work them into the roadmap and budget. Yeah, we'll find a way to make the, we'll find a way to make it into the roadmap and the project. So this is super exciting. Uh, AI's current direction is extremely centralized and many believe it could uh, put our lives at risk, to be honest with you. Uh, could a Cardano built LLM be adopted elsewhere? And what kind of brand recognition and eyeballs is that going to bring to Cardano the project? With everything happening in Cardano, how could you possibly be not not be excited about it, right? Stop looking at price. Start looking at under the hood. What is going on? And a lot of exciting things are coming to Cardano. If you enjoyed this video, we have a complete Cardano playlist. Make sure to check that out. Also, come check out our live show Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you in the next one.